meeting. Before we'll look at water. Uh, let's see. Uh, just a few things on the coronavirus and what's been going on. Um, we've been at sitting in on uh, conference calls every morning um, with Putnam County Board of Health. Uh, pretty much nothing really happens at these uh, conference calls. Uh, they give an update on the number. I think there was 32 more cases this within the last 24 hours. I think it's up to 80 some now in Putnam County. Um, so they give that data. They're out of test kits, so they're they don't know when they're going to get them or if they're going to get them, or that's just kind of up in the air. So no testing is being done. Um, so they're offering the same advice as you've probably heard of the say six feet away and no groups and. Uh, that's about it, washing your hands. Um, that's about as much as I've gotten out of those meetings. I have met with uh, Supervisor Shea and uh, Legislator Nancy Montgomery. Um, we both, we sent, uh, Richard sent a, uh, a request to uh, New York State Department of Health to shut down trailhead parking, just the trail to parking um, in, Putnam, in Phillipstown. Um, and it was granted you know, was approved by the New York State Department of Health like in 15 minutes or so, I guess. So uh, one of the problems last week and the weeks have been the number of people that have been coming in cars and uh, to our trailhead, and then I'm sure going shopping in our that food town. Um, so those trailheads are shut. Um, had a conversation with our liaison to Metro North, uh, Neil Zuckerman, uh, tonight. Uh, he's trying to, the two parking lots uh, just north of the tunnel um, on 9D belong to Metro North, so he's trying to have those shut down also. It seems like he's, you know, that they were in agreement. They're having a meeting tonight, so I don't know if that'll happen or not, but they're trying to shut the parking down in those big lots uh, just north of Breakneck um, to for, for hikers or for, you know, just for parking. Um, we also contacted the supervisor of town of Fishkill, Ozzy Alba. Um, and he was, and asked for his support. Um, they are the ones that would probably have control of uh, 9D north of the tunnel, but on the uh, on the east side. So uh, he was, um, he said that he would support the action and uh, send whatever need be to New York State. Um, that was just over a phone, phone conversation, though. Uh, Richard's supposed to send them the uh, information, so trying to. Was that shutting it down on 9D? North of the tunnel? Stopping parking, no, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So uh, I, I think, from what I understand, Fishkill probably has purview over the east side going along. Um, the parking lots on the west side, closer to the tracks, are Metro North. And so Neil Zuckerman, who are liaison is this trying <coughs> to have their shut down. So that's where we're at. I don't know. Uh, New York City, from what I understand tonight, um, is um, they're. I forget how many cases they have. It's just quadrupling or whatever, like a day. So I'm not sure the numbers there, but it's a little scary. Um, one thing that they brought up um, a number of times uh, was the amount of, and this was also in uh, our, our, our president's uh, uh, news conference today, that uh, a lot of people are trying to leave New York City, and that's of concern. They're uh, going to places like Florida and. Uh, and Eastern Long Island, and uh, if they and don't, Cold Spring, and, and Cold Spring. Spring. They yeah. didn't mention Cold Spring. I was <laughs> waiting, but <clears throat> they're there. They certainly are, and that's why I'm bringing it up, and why we'll talk about short-term rentals later. Um, but anyway, that was a big concern yeah, that you know that they're trying to contain this, and yet people are all moving and they're not self-quarantining, um, and uh, that that's a big problem. So that's where that is. That's where we're. We've been, I've been trying to do, we've been trying to do something at our level. Um, it doesn't seem like there's a plan um, any, at Putnam County. I asked them about hospitals and how we're supposed to act since we don't really have a hospital here. Um, they were supposed to, I called uh, New York Presbyterian Hospital um, and talked to, I'm not sure who I talked to there, but they adopted, it was, a, I think, the vice president of their command center. Um, and she was supposed to get back to me. That was yesterday morning, and I haven't heard anything. I asked how we could help or what we should do to prepare or if there was a plan in motion. Um, so, uh, you know, since we're like far farther away from hospitals, I'm not sure what we're supposed to do. So if something happens or if we need to set up a, set up a place with cots or whatever we're supposed to do, no, don't know. Didn't get an answer. Well, as soon as I hear back, I'll 
and let you know. But uh, those are uh, the places we've tried to reach out for and tried to, to get some help or see what we can do. Um, Putnam County does have a, set up a new hotline. It's 211 instead of 911. So you can call and just get information on the uh, on the virus and uh, hopefully they'll have answers. I have sent every all the information I get from the governor's office I send to both the current PCNR and I've asked them to please, you know, have a special section or to please publicize the uh, you know the websites or the sites that they have on the uh, from in the uh, governor's letter um, for support. Find out if you want to help or if you need uh, need help. Um, there is a number of different websites you can go, a different site you can go to. So hopefully those will be published and we'll have them put up on our website. As much as we can do right now, I think. All right, so I see that the top bot um, has yes. do not cross police tape on the two gates that go into it. However, the one section I know. of fence that's wide Well, open. I went up there and as you probably know, I think there's, th there's actually three or four. Two at least have the the lock the uh, latches on them, which you can put a lock in, which I guess Bugsy doesn't know about, didn't see. So he went up there and said, "There's no way to lock them, but there is." And the other one needs a chain yeah. and a lock. Okay, so, so he's going to attend to that tomorrow. Yeah, you're going to have to great. follow up. He wasn't working today. Yeah, great. Uh, you may have heard our dump truck was in a uh, in, or our garbage truck was in an accident yesterday. It went to a telephone pole. Um, Bugsy was driving, and uh, Mike Lyon. Uh, Junior was uh, riding shotgun. They're both okay. Um, I just didn't hear how the truck was, other than not in good shape. I don't know what that meant, but it was during that little patch of lacy slushy stuff, and uh, it was just uh, just south of, uh, or just kind of north of Bosqueville, between Bosqueville and the village. Well, another thing to deal with. Anything else on that, or I can. If there's anything you think I should do or people I should call, just let me know and I'll be glad to, to try to reach out or whatever. Okay, um, to our agenda tonight, uh, to your renewal of workers' compensation insurance with Comp Alliance. Um, I think from what I've talked and uh, anyone, is anyone more, uh, okay, go ahead then. I'm more uh, first <coughs> than I am, I just know from talking to Jeff. Uh, yeah, Jeff and I had a conference call with Kieran. Kieran was going to come in, but was under the weather, so he did a conference call with us. Comp Alliance <coughs> this year, for the first time, is, is offering a two-year option for the renewal premium that sort of locks in your rate for two years. Um, so he's given us quotes on that. Currently, our rate is about as low as it can be because uh, workers' comp is based on how many claims we have in. And once a claim is in with workers comp, it stays on your on your um, policy when they're setting rates for five years. So at this point, we're pretty clear <coughs> between there's no none on and none no new ones that we have seen so far. So um, so we're at a halfway decent rate. So they're offering a two year premium of about uh, one hundred eighteen thousand five hundred ninety dollars. Um, and then plus the um, New York State Estimated Assessment, which comes to at about 2500 in addition. It's roughly about the numbers we've been getting. Um, uh, you know, there won't be any, uh, this, this will stick you know, no matter whether or not we have claims coming in in the next year or so. So this will be already for the next two years. I spoke to Michelle about it. She has no issue with it as long as it's not, it doesn't all have to be paid up front, which it doesn't. We'll pay it in, you know, one year increments the way we usually pay it. Um, so it's a, just a way to lock in our rate for the time being, uh, and we didn't see any downside to it. So Jeff and Michelle and I recommend that we do this. <clears throat> so From what I understand, also is there only one other company we have a, a we have limited options. options. Yeah, the other the other company is Perma that we dealt with until a couple years ago when we jumped over to Comp Alliance. Um, and I don't know. I mean, we have the rate of what they charged us then, which was. Um, you know, they had quoted us 65000 in 2016-17, and Comp Alliance came in much lower, so we moved over. Uh, and we've been with Comp Alliance since 2017-18. Um, so this, this will be one, two, three, four, like our fourth and fifth year with them. <laughs> Excuse me, Fran, is the 118-590, that's for the two years? for the two years, yes, that's the total for the two years. If we wanted to do it for one year, it would be 58864 so we have the option of going, you know, one year or two years.
So, oh, okay. So if we do it for two years, it comes up to 59, So it's a little higher than, well. well yeah, why is that? Uh, because we're assuming it's gonna go up next, you know, next year to uh, higher. Right. <coughs> they are assuming. They are assuming. That next year will go up. Next year will go up. And what was it last year? Or the expiring is 58? The expiring is 58.422, and if we renew it this year, it'll be 58.864. Um, <coughs> any other discussion on that? So if we, if we go with the one year, it's a slight increase, and if we go with the two years, it's a little bit higher, but it locks us in. I'm, I'm fine with locking in for two years. Anyone else on? No. Um, is it pretty much guaranteed that our rate would go up four hundred and thirty-two dollars? Is it pretty much guaranteed that our rate from would it like if we did just one year, if we just if we just did one year and then renewed it next year? We don't know. You know, we don't know. I mean, there, if there are claims coming up the pike, then our right. rate is going to go in you know, or up. And I don't, I don't know if there's any claims. It seemed to me in the back of my head when we were talking to Kieran that there was something prior to, you know, Bugsy just having the accident. Something else was up the plate that was, uh, was Carol, was Carol Herring anything to do with us? With the claim? No, I don't I think that happened that at home. That happened at home, yeah. Um, I could, you know, I could ask him again if there's, you know, if we go with the one year, then we, then we risk whatever it comes up the pike next year. So we can do, we can do it either way. It is a little bit higher. I'm, I'm fine with two years. Oh, okay, good. You okay? It's just, it's just that usually when they give you a two-year option that they'll lock give you some same. kind of mm -hmm. little discount and yeah. lock it in at the same. I mean, um, the increase is more, than any, is, is more than what we paid from the expiring, expiring year to this year. We can lock in the one so year and then risk seeing what happens next year because we have no way of knowing, and that's that's the only option. And I understand what you're saying. Yeah. So your guys' feelings? Would would you? Would you would I'm good with two. I'm good with two. Yeah. I'm good with it too. It just. Hurts We're me good with two too. All right. So <laughs> you want to make it? Uh, I'll, I'll make a motion that we um, approve the two-year renewal on the workers' comp uh, workers' compensation insurance with Comp Alliance for the total of two years. One hundred eighteen thousand five hundred and ninety dollars. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next is approved by quote for wiring of courtroom. It includes equipment, software, wiring, and labor. Um, this was to get uh, bring us up up a bit in technology. And here have uh, the option of being able to uh, have, have a screen, um, which we could uh, you know bring up uh, information on and be more, uh, I guess it would be easier for the public to follow along and we could also work with it collaboratively if that was on the screen. So I think that's my understanding of it. At first we, uh, first it was, I think this started out uh, seeing if we could all get laptops or whatever and then uh, Steve went to uh, a resident who, uh, you know, in the know, gave us a recommendation on all his equipment which that recommendation then went back to Anthony, uh, who we work with here, and uh, and this is how we he worked out this proposal. So if we have any other questions on that, or I mean, we don't have to do this right away. If there's yeah. questions, we should. Yeah, a question. Uh, one question is from a safety or security point of view. Uh, having a large screen here when you, we may have uh, court litig litigants in the court mm -hmm. who may not be happy with what's going on uh, and that would be an ideal target for them uh, to express their mm -hmm. displeasure with what is happening. Uh, so that's one consideration. Okay. The second is, um, is the uh, tiny workstation, which I've never heard of before, but is the tiny workstation going to be hardwired and permanently on the dais here? Yes, I believe it is. Is, is that? Or I don't know if it's on this dais or wherever we are going to have the equipment or whatever whatever is needed. I'm not sure because I, I thought I heard mention of that area, but I'm not sure it's either on 
It's definitely going to be. Oh, I, I would have this. So if it's hardware, is that a problem for the justice? No, they, they cleared that already, or I, I know, and I'm not sure of the specifics, but so I know they asked Kathy about that. And okay, and she's okay with that? I think it is, okay. but I'll, I will follow up on that too. And, and so the second concern with the tiny workstation uh -huh. is that may also be a, a safety and security, not so much for the judge, but the device itself may be a target for um, people who are here appearing before the court to express their anger mm -hmm. or displeasure. And the good thing about that is when we get new chairs here, they'll be connected so they won't be able to pick one chair up and throw it at us. They get to pick up all three <coughs> or four. Um, then when we talked about this a number of years ago, um, I think you had mentioned that you would build some kind of a shelf or a, a box or something. And then I remember this was like early on when we first came on board. Uh, if there's some way we could build some kind of a box that we could lock that this, you know, the screen would be in. Because I know you have nothing else to do with your spare time, but uh, uh, we yeah, we can we can look at I'll look into it, but it's it's valid point, and we'll we'll see what the judge has to think of it. So, yeah, I don't know if we well, I guess if you don't have the screen, yeah, okay, yeah, we'll look into those. And and that would be for theft purposes. Uh, yeah, that's what as you do, uh, put it in the mean, box. And right lock. now, we can take those off the walls and smash people with it too if you're <laughs> angry, and they'd be closer than the screen and lighter. But they're not as much fun. That's not <coughs> much fun. Okay, so I will uh, follow up on those. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, next is uh, Walter has made a signed letter of support to establish the Public County Human Rights Commission. Um, I, I honestly have not had time to read into this that much. I don't know if anyone else has or have opinions, strong opinions on it one way or the other. Uh, I, did, I did a bit of research into this and I find, um, I always find that when we're establishing more commissions to do stuff that I think we already have laws about, but I'm, I'm not quite sure why we have to do this. Um, and to me it's like, like overkill, I don't know why, you know, Putnam County, Another Putnam County Commission for Human Rights. We have federal and state laws about human rights, so why do we need a commission to ensure that people have their human rights? Uh, it, it makes no sense to me. Um, you know, I looked into a little bit. I didn't. I, I know that Westchester has it. Dutchess has one. Uh, and according to Nancy's letter, um, Putnam is one of the few places that doesn't have it. I'm not sure why anybody needs it. Um, there are New York State Human, you know, Division of Human Rights that already has all this stuff. You know, I'm friendly with um, Jim Heyer. Maybe I'll, I'll email him and see what they actually do. Mm -hmm. was, I think yeah. he's on the Westchester Human Rights, mm -hmm. or I think he has something to do with it. Anyway, um, according to Nancy's letter, he's the chairman of the committee to set up a Putnam County Human Rights Commission. Right, so and I think he's involved in, in the one in Westchester. Um, I just like to know what they do. Yeah, I mean, why, if, why do if, you need this? Yeah, if is it useful to set up a commission and task people with it if there's and put more I mean, people, what are they supposed to do? Put more people with more salaries into a commission that we. Yeah, and, and you know, and that you know, I know Nancy had asked us to do this, and I respect Nancy, but I'm not yeah. too sure as to why this is needed. So. Okay, so let me do a little more research, because like I said, I just barely read that. I'll also talk to Nancy and, and ask her and uh, get some more information. But you said there's one in Dutchess I can reach out to. There's one in Dutchess, there's one in Westchester okay. from what I could see, and I just printed out the, the State Division of Human Resources. <clears throat> okay, we're, we're killing this tonight. Um, Discuss about uh, paying, or no, where we are. So authorized mayor to sign 2019 uh, sponsor authorization form for service award program, the low sap for our firefighters. <coughs> Anyone have any uh, discussion on this? Well, somebody can, if somebody else would. We make a motion to authorize the mayor to sign the 2019 Sponsor authorization form for service award program. I second that. 
All in favor? Aye. I will drop that off to uh, Jeff tomorrow. Uh, okay, uh, next is discussion on paying employee, on paying employee during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. I think the discussion should be, uh, you know, if we do that, I think it's going to, you know, actually be more than just one person or it could be, so we have to keep that in mind, uh, how we want to handle it. So, uh, although we're talking about one person right now. Well, I, I don't know that it's just one person right now. Um, we have multiple employees who are full-time employees work 37 and a half hours a week. And my, I suspect that their workloads are going to go down as- uh, So who would they be? Pardon me? Who would they be? Um, Kathy Costello mm -hmm. and Jeff. And so they would, if their workload goes down and they don't spend as many hours in the office, doing their work or at home doing work, then they would be faced with a decreased number of billable hours. In addition, we have a part-time person who doesn't qualify for unemployment insur insur insurance mm -hmm. um, who has had her hours decreased significantly, although I understand that there is discussion about having her work sometime tomorrow, some hours tomorrow, and in the month of April, I don't know what life will be like in the month of April, but the water and sewer bills have to go out, so she'll be, she'll be busy doing that. Mm -hmm. What I was going to suggest is that as a, a general policy, the village pay part-time and full-time employees for their normal, uh, uh, normal hourly service, the normal number of hours that they work, even though they may not be working them, with the understanding that when things get back to normal, they may have to put in extra time to catch up on things, at which point that extra time that they work would be subtracted from the overpayment they received when they were, were, were not working. So for example, if someone works 37 and a half hours a week and, we f and they find that they really only need to work 30 hours to get their job done because their workload has gone down. When the workload gets back to normal, it is possible that the workload could require more than 37 and a half hours of their time. So if they worked only 30 hours this week, they received an extra seven and a half hours of pay. They would work for free for those seven and a half hours of pay when, if, if the situation wants additional time on their part. So basically, we won't pay them overtime. If, if when they come back, that's, for example. That's a better way to put it. We won't pay them. Okay. Which was regular, what was going on in my head. Regular while, time or right. time and a half. Yes. So, for example, you know, like the easiest way that I could see it was Tom and Kathy. Like, you know, right now, Tom's probably not here. The courts are closed. But when he comes back, he's going to have to deal with all those cases. I mean, Tom's on a flat salary, so he doesn't really come into this. Right. <clears throat> and Kathy may need a lot of extra time, but if we pay her now for not coming in, then she does come in, we won't pay her overtime. It, that's, so, you put yeah. it met much better than what I was describing, but that's well, it. Two things, one, well, Tom we can't consider because he's an elected right. official. Mm -hmm. um, Kathy is, as can collect unemployment. If there's no work and we're not having any courts. If, if there's no work. Right, if but, there's no work, so. But right now she's working from home. Uh, so I don't know what she's doing. Who would, mm -hmm. who would know that besides her and the honesty policy? Mm -hmm. Jeff, I think, I can't see him not working, even if he, his workload is down. I'm not, a, not disagreeing with your thing. I'm just trying to think of who else is included I, I, in this. I, I, those are the only people that, that I right. I, I can't imagine water, wastewater, or highway. Unless they get sick, in which case. In which case they have their sickness pay. 
Mm. Well, the thing is that somebody can say that as a, a village employee, I am concerned about my the health issues of, 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 of continuing work here and like like other people that are in the office, I, uh, I'd i like to be paid and I'd like to stay home. I, th I think they could do that. The other thing too is that um, I'm not sure the Department of Labor would let us, I, I agree with your suggestion, I think it's a great idea. I'm not sure the Department of Labor is going to allow us to do that. To, to what, not pay them overtime? Right. right. Work over. um, I, you know, I know what you're saying because of the Department of Labor, but these are strange times, so I think it's worth us, you know, maybe Michelle would have a better insight into it, but I, you know, I mean, I've always been thinking about <coughs> paying them when they're not working and not having them put in all the time. I don't know how much overtime Ann would need um, to do bills. I would think that probably Kathy would need more when the court goes a little bit crazy. Um, <coughs> I don't think it would be Kathy yeah. and not necessarily Ann. Yeah. And, um, you know, in terms of in terms of the highway and the waste water at this point, I think we're okay unless one of them comes down. They're more something. essential. Mm -hmm. They are they essential, are essential. And, and so yeah. is essential workers. You know, I mean, as non-essential workers, pretty much everybody's told them they can't come in, and then pretty much everyone's told the courts that they have to shut down. <coughs> and I'm sure I think what Kathy is doing more than anything else at this point is contacting people who have court cases yeah, and contacting people who are anything. getting. You know, <clears throat> who are getting tickets and so on and so forth and filing through all that stuff. Um, I agree with what Marie's suggestion in terms of, of paying them their regular flat, you know, whatever their regular flat hours are. And, um, so why don't we talk to Kathy? I think we should talk to her. Just ask her what she thinks of this option or whatever. I think she's the one to be affected by it most. I mean, basically, and it's not working, you know, all that many hours anyway. So yeah. I can see. <laughs> Um, I don't know what Kathy's workload is going to be like when she comes back. We're not having courts, but then again, they're not getting out tickets either. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, I don't know what, what whatever court, since the court is closed, whoever, whoever was supposed to have come to court in this time period is all going to have to come. That's going to come back, yeah. But as far as I don't think anyone's writing any tickets, I don't think anybody doubts it. Yeah, I don't know what else they do. I mean, they do have others, but I don't know. So can we just run it by Kathy first? Sure. Just, yeah, I just mean, I would just talk, I would contact her yeah. and see if mm -hmm. I'm fine. I'm fine with the thing. So do, we can, do you want me to contact her? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, okay. I'm fine. Yeah. 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 Say, I'm fine with it too. I just, yeah. I just don't want us to get jammed up with the Department of Labor sure. doing something. Fun. I mean, what we could do is not have her. You know, like if it's just a sandwich, well, you can't work overtime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, when it comes down to it, we I mean, have that control. You know, with Anne, um, she, she probably does, you know, her basic stuff, but with Kathy, I don't think we, you know, if, if they have court late at night or whatever they do and they have, you know, a whole bunch of people and you can't just say you can't work all the time. Yeah. Jeff has offered not to be in the office for half a day. He would come in, leave, so that she comes in, because if she's here, you know, and we want to keep our distance or whatever, mm -hmm. she's walking continually yeah. in and out of the office. Mm -hmm. No. So, yeah. he no, doesn't want It's that. reasonable. Yeah, yeah, no. I, I think it's very good yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. 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 So. All right, we'll talk to Kathy. I, I think that that's let everybody know an option, and I think that's fine. So we can definitely let everyone know next week. <coughs> Thank you. Um, discussion on, oh, we got that. Uh, approved quote for hard wine police vehicles in the Ford Explorer. A, a problem with the quote, um, the, at the bottom of the quote, the third line, hardware costs are estimated on September 12, 2019, and not, are, are not valid after 30 days. I don't know whether Anthony didn't update this, yeah. or whether this is an old version. Okay, I think we should find out. <laughs> I'll ask Jeff tomorrow. Okay. Uh, that's the only problem I have here. Okay. Good night. Okay. Put it off today, tomorrow, today, well, we can do two. Mm -hmm. uh, discussion on procedures for the public hearing. Um, I had talked a little bit to Jeff about this, and, and you know, we have quite a bit of leeway, but I 
I do not want to be seen as not wanting public input or whatever and doing everything that we can to do that. Um, my suggestion is it's on the website and everything now. We open the public hearing, but we keep it open for a week, and uh, but end it before the next meeting. You know, so I don't know, like, so next Tuesday is the public hearing, right? No, or the week. It's the following, following Tuesday. Week. So we could have if we have the public hearing, that's when we're supposed to be getting input. I don't think we should close it that night. I think we should keep it open until at least, you know before our next meeting, or not before our next meeting, I think we should keep it open to like maybe Friday or Saturday or something so we can, if any input comes in, we'll have time to act on it, I guess. Okay. Do we want to, do we want to open the public hearing before that night? I mean, can, I don't know if we can do this, like, public hearing set for April 7th, so say we open it we Tuesday could do it before, this, and then. This coming Tuesday, we could do that. When yeah. that meeting? We could meet just to to open the public hearing or I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess we open it on the 7th and we open until the end of that week. That's the tentative budget's out there and it's there, so I don't know if we could open it tonight. <laughs> I don't think that would be wise. No, I think, I think, I think it has to be noticed. noticed. Oh, that's right. I forgot about the notice. I was just thinking that, No, no, no. I mean, I it, would be, it would have <laughs> been good if we could do that. But yeah, all right. What if, what if we put repetitive um, notices on Facebook and on our web page saying please send any comments you have on the budget but by email and we'll review them so that you don't have to come in. Yeah, I think that's what we'll have to do. We have to put yeah. notices in the paper. I, mean, yeah, I think there has the to be a plea under these circumstances. Yeah. I, I looked on Nikon to try to get some guidance in, in terms of uh, like public hearings for budgets and stuff. They weren't too clear. No. They didn't say you don't have to have them, you know, because I was thinking we could do just that. They didn't really say that. And I know you talked about doing it in the firehouse. Um, I mean, yeah, that's not enough. I, we're not like doing that. Yeah, I mean, we could probably still do it here, you know, for a, a handful. Maybe we could, we could encourage people, as one says, to comment online and then, you know, we'll open, but we have to, we have to limit how many people can walk in this room. Yeah, well, I don't think we should, but I don't think anything should be open. So I think it's got to be, you know, we have to put the notice out there a, a number of times and say, go to the website, mm -hmm. look at the look at the tentative budget that we adopted, and. I think uh, one other thing in the uh, notice of the public hearing, I think we have for those residents who do not have access to a computer, and there are residents who do not. I think we need to put in the public in the notice of the public hearing that if and we should probably notice it as soon as possible, put in the notice that if they wish a hard copy of the budget, they need to call the village office and a hard copy will be sent to them. Okay, I agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they can also mail it in. And they can also the mail it in. Or stick it in the slot, sir. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think with those steps, that we're doing all that is practical and reasonable under the circumstances. So the public hearing will be opened on April 7th and it will be closed on April 10th. We'll probably, right. we'll probably need to have a meeting to close it. Right. So the, for the adoption, that was at the following Tuesday, isn't it? Uh, 14th. The 14th, yes. So, so we'd have to have that meeting, close it, and or, well, see if there's any discussion on anything that's been brought up and, and close it. I don't yeah. know, we, we won't be able to do anything quicker than that. Can we, unless, can we open it next, can we meet next Tuesday to open the public hearing? I would. Uh, we don't have time to notice it. How much, yeah, there is a, there's an extended it's, notice. It's a budget. five, I think it's five days. I think you have to publish the notice five days in advance. Right, so you guys are. So if we did that tomorrow, <coughs> Comes on Friday for us. Mm -hmm. Ours comes out on Friday. But so you're not our official. You're not a, our official paper. The PCNR is our official paper, and he may already have gone to the printer. Yeah. <coughs> I don't know if it has to go into the. If the public notice has to go into the paper, I think public notice is. <coughs> right. No, I think I think a public notice. Has right, I'm going to look into that. Yeah. If we can do it, then legally. We'll, we'll see, then I can, I'll get it back in touch with you.
So we'll try to give as much space as we can and get as many people to, I mean, I don't know, we've been here for how many years now and how many people have come to the public to the meeting? I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I'm not but basing we, anything on that. But, but. but we, have, we have one person who typically shows up. Yeah, okay. you know, I think last year he didn't even show up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll do everything we can to do that, and, and, I, and I agree with Lynn, I think we should, whatever, we could put more ads or whatever we have to do, and the circumstances, and, and Maria, I like that suggestion also, we, we'll put that in the offer. Uh, okay. Uh, next is a request to purchase village owned property on Moffat Road. Um, we don't have to, you know, we don't have a resolution or anything now, but we need to, in order to move forward, um, we need to uh, to agree that you know we're willing to sell it and then have whatever drafted. Yes. Yes. So, yes. Yes. So I'll make a motion that um, we accept the uh, the offer um, from Josh M J Myers of Douglas Lane in Cold Spring to purchase the village property <laughs> on the corner of Moffat and Healy for the amount of twenty one thousand five hundred dollars. Second. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to approve. Oh, excuse me, but oh, sorry. Get, what was the name of the fellow who we were selling this to? Um, Josh. Josh Myers. Uh, J O S H, J, in middle initial, and Mayor. I guess it's Mayor. I think it's Myers. Right. Right. Myers. Myers. M E Y E R. Thank you. Sorry for interrupting. That's okay. That's a thirty-one Douglas Lane. If you need that, or whatever. For the for the papers, whoever doesn't know, I don't know. Are you? Do you need any information? More information on that? You weren't here last week. We How big is the property? What's that? Hope it's like an acre. an acre. So it's on the corner, which uh, is, I think it's in a. It's I think it's split between Phillipstown and Nelsonville. That's one problem. There are also there are discussions on this in the past. Right? Yeah. yeah. I think in 2017 we had an offer from the adjacent landowner for twenty thousand dollars. She had an appraisal. Um, and so we asked her to come back, said that we thought it was worth more, um, and haven't heard anything from her. So it's also it's steep slopes, got a, a scenic overlay, I think, and yeah. it's also 10 acres zoning there. So. Yes, it's steep slope and marshy at the bottom. It's part of the Phillipstown Scenic Protection Overlay District. And there are two parcels, one is in Nelsonville and one is in Cold Spring. The Cold Spring, the Cold Spring parcel is 0.67 acres. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. It's two parcels. One is 0.3 acres, and the other is 0.67 acres. Both are on. One is in Nelsonville. One is in Fieldstone. They're both owned by the village. And they were purchased by the village, or procured by the village, to provide access to the aqueduct many years ago. That access is no longer needed because there is different access to the aqueduct now. OK. Just wanted to fill you in on that if you hadn't. Uh, next, uh, approval bills. Okay, I move to approve batch number 5508 for a total amount of $134,435.86. I will second that discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next we have uh, approval of village board meeting, uh, board meeting uh, March 9th, 2020. I'll make a motion to approve. A second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. And lastly, uh, March uh, 10th, 2020. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I would like to thank the uh, trustees for sending Michael a revisions on that and Michael for taking care of that. It saved a lot of time here and having discussions. So thank you all for squaring away minutes. Anything else? Yes, please. Yes. Oh, go ahead. I forgot what else I wanted to bring up. Covered, covered, yeah. 
the that. next color. Um, I think we need to put that on hold and see if we can do that remotely, or if we don't, we'll all have laptops, we can do it. Yeah, yeah we can. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you have a laptop and, and we're good, and I'm fine coming in. Okay, mm -hmm. so if we have it next Wednesday? Uh, that should be okay. I think the tree advisors are. Are they, they won't be on the be okay. So that was so Wednesday, the 31st. No, the first. April 1st. So is that going to be an in-person meeting that you want recorded, or you guys are going to do it via one of the... No, we'll just need, uh, we'll just have it filmed. If you could come in and film, and that's it. You know, do you think you'll have your laptop by then? But, what's that? You, will you have your laptop? I think so. I think Anthony has it. I think okay. Anthony, Jeff said, ready to go. And the meeting time, it would be 7 or 7.30. I can oh. do 7. Can you, can you want to do earlier? You're not working, right? Yeah, we can just tell me when. It's convenient for you guys. I'll be there. I mean, I don't care. 6, 6.30? Six you tell me. I'm 6 is good. Six six are you working? Is Steve working? No. Mm -hmm. six no, Steve's going to be in quarantine for a little. Yeah. For anyone don't know, Steve's wife has well, all the symptoms but hasn't been able to have been tested. I don't know if she got tested or not. That's but she's been really thing. sick. I think she's doing better. Mm -hmm. I know a couple other people who have been extremely sick, mm -hmm. yeah. but are now better. It's almost impossible to get a test. Yeah, you, just you have to go to your physician. You have to, and then even then, I don't know if that's good enough. You have to pretty and much on deathbed. To, you said Putnam County has no more tests, right? They have no oh, tests, probably. but you could go somewhere else. I mean, there's places you can go. There's drive through I think, at Anthony Wayne. Anthony Wayne. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think you need an appointment. You, need you do need yeah. an appointment. You need to be sent there by your mm -hmm. doctor. The yeah, same one with this show. Yeah. But yeah, these they are say, also yeah. at capacity at 8 a.m. They say drive through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You need, need an through. appointment for the drive through My the meeting time was set at 6 p.m. Can you make that, Michael? Oh, yeah, I forgot to ask you. <laughs> Let me check my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I can squeeze you in. <laughs> and you have so many things, so many places to go. We can still get takeout from Mike. I <laughs> think he's the only one open. The foundry and Mike, are they the only ones open at that? Probably, yeah. Pretty yeah. much now, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I thought you, sh you showed um, uh, Bouchon. The Bouchon is doing takeout? No. Mm, I can't remember. Uh, Depot is still. And Catherine. Yeah. Catherine was, I think. Yeah. We're updating it. I think week. Catherine's yeah. dropped it. Yeah, I think she stopped. Did she stop? Hudson right? Hills dropped it. How about Hudson House on the other side? Are they open? The main course is closed. Hudson yeah. Hills is closed. Yeah. yeah. Hudson House? No. I don't think they ever opened. No. Yeah, they they tried. I think they tried for a day or two. I tried calling numerous times and going there and was never. Yeah. Yeah. All I know is that I've eaten more stuff that I don't need to eat because I keep trying to go and help me, you know, um, shopping at these places. Yeah, and still open. I'm getting tons of yeah, right. We still, Veggie Gaga still has lots of soup and frozen burgers, and we have stuff. So if you need anything, call us. I've got presents. Are you, are you, I mean, if you put it up on the website, you can probably get a bunch of people who would, who would buy it and bring it in. But, um, uh, last thing, um, which will be a tough one. Uh, I. We need to do something to take action on, and I don't know how we do this, that's why I've hesitated to start, on short-term rentals. Okay. I don't know how we enforce it or what we do, but I think we should contact everyone that has them. I think we should put something on the paper and say this is against the law as far as our code goes. Um, we were hoping to have a law by now, and we've let it go, but under these circumstances, I'm not comfortable having families moving in <laughs> and yeah, out of yeah, uh, yeah. rentals yeah. from New York City yeah. or wherever. I agree with you. Yeah, the I only way know. we can, I, mean, um, I, I believe the governor needs to say something about it. I, the governor needs to take action on it. I think we should write a letter yeah, but we, I'm from the village cold. asking the governor to do it. But we can also contact everybody that's got a listing on. Home away. Well, even if the, if the governor says it or we say it, we, right now they're not supposed to have them. It's against our law. Right. Well, well, then a couple well, of sites. Right now in R1. Yes, besides that, we know that, okay, yes, there are a couple instances, but for the most part, 99% of them, if not all of them, I don't know who's on Well, there's a lot, there are the ones that are short term rental, and those are permitted. There's, if you're in R3, that's permitted. 
It's R1 when you're not on the state highway. And if you've got, and if you get a variance for it, you can't just have it. No, it's it's. Mm, yes, I think so. No, it, you need a, a permit. Right. But. All oh, right, you wouldn't need a variance. You need a permit. Right. Yeah. So I don't think they have that. They haven't given any. But I. That's basically well. That's 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 true or whatever. But I think the majority are are, are whatever. And I think that we if we called a uh, you know for a state of emergency, we could declare that and we could stop B and Bs and we could stop hotels too or inns. So how do we? I mean, you know, I agree with you, but then how, who's going to enforce it? I don't know. I think we should put it out there and, and ask people to just please stop and uh, it's against law and that we are, we'll, we'll do our best to enforce it and whether or not we do or not. And then also, you know, when, you know, this will, this will be a consideration when we do come up with, you know, some short-term rental uh, rules. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, it, it's, it's a consideration for your neighbors, but you're not letting it, just anybody walk down the street and move your house <clears throat> If they're advertising, and we say stop your ad stop advertising on Airbnb, the advertising's there. But, yeah. I mean, you can go there and you can see everybody who's just renting. Yeah. And we can send each one a notice. I'm willing to go and they see who it is and send them a notice if we have to. It's not hard to find. Yeah, I think we should. I think we need to protect the people who live here. We have a lot of obviously people. the people who live there don't care. Because they're well, the probably neighbors. not living there. The neighbors are the ones who are worried about, not the ones who live in the you know, It's the people who live next door, the people who live in there. <coughs> yeah, well, the, well, the people that live next door are probably not coming within six feet mm -hmm. of the, the people that are, are there. Uh, my remark earlier at the beginning was um, at least two people whom I know spend their weeks in the city are now spending their entire weeks in the village, but they own a home in the village. Mm -hmm. And and so they, instead of going to Montauk, they go to Cold Spring. Mm -hmm. um, but they're it, doing that legally, they own the home. That's right. Yeah. And in some cases, they're not renting it out as a B&B, &B right. because they're occupying it. Yeah. I, I think that this needs to be checked. I think John needs to give us advice on this, whether or not we can do that. What do you mean what we can do or not? It's against the law. Why can't we do it? Why do we even what are we going to set in the letter? Uh, well, we can ask him what we have to say, but I would say that stop, Walter, to stop, you know. Okay. And I, I don't know how we enforce it or what we do from that. I just, we, we, need, to, we need to put a hold on them. I agree. And I think, I think it, it would help us if we wrote a letter to the governor saying, we're seeing this. Will you please address Airbnbs and short-term rentals and shut them down? You've shut other businesses down. You can shut this one down too. Oh, so I think, that's, that's I think we write a letter. But, to but the I mean, the, the logic in shutting down an Airbnb when the entire building is being leased, rented to someone else—that's no violation of any of the health provisions that the state or the federal government have put in place. And I, I, I'm not disagreeing with what you propose to do, but what, what health risk do, do people pose if they're renting an Airbnb and they're renting the entire building? Um, they're they're shopping, they're coming up from an area that's, that's, an, that's an epicenter Possibly, Possibly, more than likely, and they're coming into our village, and where are they going to shop, and where are they going to get provisions? They're going to go over to Food Town. Yeah. And, and, and that's where the health issue comes in, and that's what I'm worried and about. And right. and the, 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 same, and the same health issue comes with those people who are still commuting to New York because they need their jobs. So they go down to New York on a train, and they come back on a train, and they shop at Food Town. And but so that's they, essential. This is recreational or to them, to them. To them, I suspect this is not considered recreational. I think to those people who are renting houses, it's it's more they're what they're, they're doing that to try to protect their health. But it's but, not just houses. <coughs> it's people with with apartments in their homes that are that are doing it. 
one person I know who is on quarantine, but they are renting out their Airbnb in the, bo in the bottom of their house. And also with the, uh, the amount of difference, if somebody that's, uh, I mean, I understand what you're saying, and someone can bring stuff back and forth, you know, no doubt about that, but if I have a family that just comes in for a week, uh, the house next to mine, which they just did, I don't know how long they're staying, so then they're going to leave, there was a family before them, and then, so I'm going to have multiple families, which I think heightens the risk factor. Yes. Versus someone going to the city and back and forth. And I, it's I, don't, not just, I don't know what the risk is. If it's not just I the risk of people that. who live here. It's the risk of the spread. We need people to stop moving so that the spread is flattened, mm -hmm. so that the curve is yeah. flattened, and we can make it easier on the health care system. Something I mean, people who are ignoring that, people who come up from the city, they, I'm sorry, it's inconvenient. I wouldn't want to stay in a little apartment in an apartment building in the city for the duration of this either. But that's where you are. You can't come tonight. here and escape. Something came up tonight that basically the governor in Florida wants um, anybody who's coming into Florida from New York City to be quarantined for 14 days. And they're saying because New York City is such an epicenter that anybody who's traveling out of the city needs to be quarantined for 14 days, and maybe we can piggyback, piggyback onto something like that. Yeah. Well, I understand the people are working. I mean, I know one of my neighbors works in the city, but he's staying down there, you know, for a number of reasons. He's got a hotel down there, he's staying down there. He's not coming home because he's not bringing it back and forth to his wife, who has not been well, and his son, who's home. Uh, so he's stuck in a hotel in the city. Mm -hmm. But, and, I mean, not everybody can do that. Not everybody's companies will allow them to do that. But there is uh, something that came out today basically saying people traveling out of New York City need to be quarantined. So we may be able to take you back Florida, on that. Florida did that a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I think what you try to do is, is limit the chances as much as possible. Are we going to stop everyone? Is anyone even going to listen? No. Most likely not. No. But to some not do anything will. or to not, I think some people will. And I think it, it's worth, and we do have a law that says you can't do it. And that's different than somebody that wants to commute every now and then or commutes every day. Maybe, and that is I think, unfortunate. I think we should put the note out. And, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's an issue that we're very much aware of. You know. <laughs> And you know, those who are going to complain know the code. Those who are going to complain know the code and know whether they're in the districts or not. And those. But none of them are. There's hardly any in the districts. And they don't have a permit for them, so we can deny permits. Now, what does this do with the hotel on the street? I'll, I'll talk to John. And I know the governor was talking about shutting down B&Bs and, and also, like, you know, and hotels. So, so it's, not just, it's not just the hotel on Main Street. Yeah. It's Hudson House, right, it's exactly. Pig Hill Inn, right. it's the Blah House, mm -hmm. and and I mean you can certainly you can certainly try to stop people from coming to the village and renting houses or apartments or rooms, but as far as Fieldstone is concerned, there are a fair number of uh, rental places in the town of Fieldstone which are going to continue to go on, and those people are going to come to the village to do their grocery shopping, their getting their drugs, by that I mean their drugs that don't work. Um, Look, I mean, again, I can't, we can't control everything, no. so I right. think we should, I mean, if you look at it that way, you should just do nothing because, you know, stop groups you know, from going, you know, what, what Richard's trying to do, we're trying to do about stopping trailhead parking or whatever, that's going to stop up. But there are people that come up on trains in there, and there are people that, are not, I'm not sure, but they'll find their way to the mountains, and we're not going to stop that. But it's not reason to try to limit, the, you know. I mean, I think a, a statement that basically says, you know, this is what our law says, and be considerate of your neighbors. We're asking you to be considerate of your neighbors for everything else, you know. The people we're bringing up here are, are contaminating <coughs> can potentially can can potentially contaminate people who live here, and not everybody who's coming up here is from New York City, so we can't say that. But where do they come from? People I think it increases home the risk stop of, the of stay home. Stay home and stop the spread. I'll talk to John. John. Yeah, I think it's possible. question related. Um, the governor ordered all non-essential businesses closed, basically, right? Right. So it would not Pig Hill would not be an essential business. An Airbnb is a business that's not an essential business. 
Isn't that rationale enough right there? I would think so. Yes, but it's not operated at, as, I mean, there's no business ID. There's no, Thank you. Not registered as a, as a business. Mm -hmm. But all hotels and inns are, and they yes. probably cease operating. Well, I, I wonder about that because the hotels in New York City are, although their occupancy rate is very, very low, the federal government is considering shoring them up. So hotels as a business are <coughs> potentially being supported. But I'm not seeing hotels listed as, I think this is the list I sent you the other day, mm -hmm. listed as an essential uh, at this point anyway. Yeah, but they, they are open because they're reporting. Maybe they're essential in New York City because it's a, a hub of commerce and the. Uh, yeah. Well, I was reading through the latest version of what essential businesses are yesterday and today and did not see hotels bed and breakfast or Airbnbs mm -hmm. air anywhere on there. So if they're not, I think they should be closed. I'll run that by John Wilson. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't want to be heartless and wreck people's lives. But You're not. Whatever. You're saving people's lives. Okay. Anything else? Okay. We will uh, let everybody stay healthy and we'll see each other on Wednesday at the latest. And you can't go to make a motion. Oh. Yes, I ready. I'll make a motion to adjourn. And I'll second. <coughs> and a second from Lynn. All in favor? Aye. Aye.